Well, check this one out. This is so weird. This one is called, I haven't read these in a while, but this one's called, On a Plane Headed to Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was up here at the, working with the juvenile hall, with the raging ones, I call them. This Sunday, the 7th, my best Sunday in a long time. I took the CNA side to the park a few blocks from the house. Beautiful morning. I skipped buying the Sunday paper. I avoided my laptop. I didn't check emails. I didn't even eat breakfast. Eastside grabbed the football and the three of us played catch. Lucia makes her own decisions and soon she said, I'm going to the playground. And as she always did, she picked an isolated spot to dig in the sand and immerse herself in her make believe world. Where she flies and God's descend to visit her and listen to her epic stories. I showed Eastside meanwhile how to keep his fingers spread on the thread of the ball. How to go toward the ball, not away from it when I threw it. I showed him how to do a drum kick. And then Lucia returned and we were all one team. Lucia hiked it to me. Eastside went down and out and I tossed it to him. He caught it. And Lucia saw two girls her age dressed as fairies. Pink wings, pink skirts, pink wands. And she said, bye, bye, bye. And the three of them immediately united, inventing games, turning each other into whatever animal, plant, and mineral they desired. All the while, the three girls were dancing and dashing about lightly mounted and having a serene leg. He said, kept wanting me to throw the ball in. Higher, Baba, higher! Higher and farther. And I wonder, what is it about the height of the ball that excites a child? The higher it goes, the higher is excitement. And so we decided to go over to the playground and dig a hole in the sand. And I spread my whole body out on the dirt, all on the sand, legs stretched and elbows propped and my right hand scraping the bottom of the hole with a stick. And Lucia joined us and dug with another stick while Esau went off and returned embracing his t-shirt and bulging with rocks that he circled around the hole that I made to create a castle wall. And Lucia and I broke twigs and these were supposed to be cannons. And we set them next to the rocks and the two fairies collected the red berries we called cannonballs. And we piled these next to the sticks, but Esau didn't like them so we took them down. And for hours I reclined in the sand like a big dog with its tail smoothing the sand, scratching deeper, pushing in stones, talking with Esau in the low tone of a papa bear to his cubs, while the grown-ups on the other side of the play dome gathered at the opposite end, time to time glanced at me as if I was retarded. And the seal later asked if I could cover her in sand up to her waist, and I did. And in one soon move, she leaped up and sand exploded everywhere, and the adults looked at me and said, bastard. <laughs> and then the three of us headed back to my Toyota, drove away into the elm trees that skirted the park, feeling as few people do these days, so loved by the sand and the universe, embraced by the earth, our souls like branches that shook slightly in the morning breeze, branches that were warm by the morning sunlight, a branch that child steps on to climb way up, way up high, way above the earth, above the daily worries, above the fighting parents, above the drugs and the violence and the wars, to perch where he or she could see all how beautiful life was. And yet, there was a twinge of sorrow thinking how I would one day be nothing but a mere sand grain. And how one day they would sift me through their fingers and kneel as they talked to the earth. Arriving tonight, my love, in Minneapolis, Leah, a teacher, was telling me about the kids she has and which I'll be working with tomorrow. All the street kids are so to her. They're all like young lives are like fire, Leah. They can be used to burn a city down or they can illuminate the darkness sober. 